Scott, fans are obviously familiar with your role at the club now and the impact it has on the first team. Um, how do you assess the first team performance this season? I admit four games to go still when we're recording this, but how do you assess it? I think if, if you look at the start of the season, new manager, a lot of players away on international, obviously the Euros, so a new manager, short time to work with the squad. Um, last season finished 13th. This season we've been in the top eight for the majority of the season, so overall I'd say a really positive season. I think the emergence of some of the younger players, I think of obviously Max this season and how he's emerged. I think that, you know, the debuts of Kundal and, and Chem Campbell are obviously players I know well from the academy. And then just the performance of the team overall. I think of the night at Old Trafford, going to Tottenham, you know, taking Man City to a very dubious penalty with 10 men. So I think that, you know, on the Arsenal, we lose a game in the last five, 10 minutes. So some of the performances I think have been outstanding. Obviously with every season, every coach, every manager, every technical director saying, well, we should have picked a point up there. Mm. We could have done that. But overall, uh, yeah, a, a, a big transitional period in the summer that always gives you some concerns. Is it going to work? But overall, really happy. Do you feel there's been a disparity between some performances and others? Is that natural in a, in a league like this that you're going to get the good and bad days? I think in the Premier League, if you don't perform, then you're going to have a tough day. Um, and there's been some, more, like say, some frustrating moments where probably we feel we could have gone into the top six and we've probably just not quite done that. And that would be probably the only area where I would say that, you know, we have, I feel that we probably could have done a little bit better at time. But overall, the... You know, their attitude, the, the, the desire in the boys and the staff as well. And, and the whole football club to really progress, you see, I think is something that we should all be really proud about. Absolutely. Do you put some of that down to squad depth, maybe? Um, I think squad depth is always difficult because ultimately we're a club that likes to bring our own players through. And if I bring another central midfield player in, we never find out we've got, a, obviously, an excellent young player in Luke Gundle. So there's always a balance between depth and... And then probably, if, I, if I'm honest, we probably were at our strongest when we had the most injuries and the least number of players. So there's always a balance in that in terms of... And also making sure that you haven't got lots of players hanging around who haven't got a chance to play. You know, a very experienced players who are not going to be happy as well. So it's always a fine balance. I think perfection is always something you're looking for, but again, as a football club, we're always looking at giving the younger players a chance. And supporters are obviously keen going into the summer to know the plans. Do you envisage it being a busy summer? I think as always, we'll look at what we're going to do to progress, really. I think that, you know, as I've always said, to find players that are better than the players we've got is never that easy. So we'll be speaking with a manager, speaking as a staff and saying, OK, well, again, we want to progress next season. Can we get into the top six? What, are we going to, what do we need to do to get into there? It's not always about buying 20 players, but maybe looking at one or two key positions that we want to do something. And if we can talk specifics regarding a couple of players, what was the thinking behind Adama Traore's low move to Barcelona and what do you envisage that happening now? Um, I think that ultimately Adama didn't want to stay, doesn't want to sign a new contract, was offered, in our opinion, a very good contract. I think it was a situation where we had to look at that, wasn't playing, so wasn't actually given an opportunity to, to show his skills, his ability, he couldn't get into the team. So we felt at the time probably to go to his hometown where he's from. Obviously, he's got a, a close affinity to the club and he wanted really to push that to go. Uh, that it was for, for all parties really was the best option. We wanted him to go there, show sure everybody what he could do in Spain, obviously being back, back home. Um, but ultimately, yeah, probably hasn't had, like with us, he hasn't had the minutes that he probably wanted himself. And will that affect what happens in the future in terms of the fee you'd like for him or anything like that, do you feel? I think, um, I think it's still to be decided. I think obviously we've got one or two things we can look at um, and we'll certainly something we discuss in the summer. Um, realistically, what's the club's strategy with Ruben Neves? Ruben's a top player. You know, Ruben's been fantastic this season um, and, and I think, you know, showed again his quality. Also, I think showed how happy he's here. So I think that's something that we as a club know as well. Ideal situation is we want him to stay. And, you know, I've spoken to him about it. Uh, but I am also realistic that when you have got an outstanding player, then the top clubs are going to come and try and um, see what the situation is. Again, it'll be discussed on what's the right for, for the club and uh, will certainly be something we would look at. It's raining a bit now, Scott, so we're going to head to the dugouts. Um, supporters are looking at the striker situation, saying there's not much strength in depth there. And then when you look at central midfield, possibly uh, Ruben Neves moving on and João Martinho's age, they're looking at those as areas that really need strengthening. What do you think? Yeah, I think that it's fair to say that Ultimately, we would say that we haven't scored enough goals really this season and you're always looking at opportunities to try and do that. Um, I think Fabio's shown again he's really developing this season and obviously Raul's come back from a, 
obviously traumatic injury and he's still settling in and I still think he's finding his feet. You know, it'd be a situation where we have to look at the end of the season, review everything, OK, we haven't scored a lot of goals, then what are we going to do about it? Can you clarify the makeup of the scouting setup, particularly uh, with regards to the impact of Brexit and how that might have I mean you've got a further reach than before? Yeah, I think ultimately, you know, I think it showed last summer where we signed, uh, you know, Yersa Mascara from Colombia. You know, that was something we probably wouldn't have been able to do before. So the market's wide open and it's something that we're always looking. You know, we do a lot more work now in South America than we've ever, ever done, probably at the MLS. And obviously because of our uh, ownership, obviously, with, with Asia as well. So, you know, we're always looking at all the markets. I think, like I said before, Brexit has really opened up the market apart from obviously still having an eye on the youth development side where it's really closed it down up to 18 to only sort of the British market. We've had one question in from a supporter saying he's read that Matt Hobbs is Chief Scout and Ben Rigglesworth is Chief of Scouting. What's the difference? Um, well, I think Matt's in charge and Ben's not, so <laughs> I think that will keep it simply. Ben, you know, Matt is head of recruitment, head of scouting, and Ben works very close with him and obviously they work close with me. Uh, two people I know really well so yeah that, that, that's the structure. What qualities do they both bring to the club? Um, I think both very different I think Matt's um, been his scout a long time uh, and it's been his family a long time um, really good with people really good at communicating to people I think really good at selling wolves uh, and I think we do that really well and people are really intrigued and interested in as a football club and Ben's uh, a bit of a data freak and he loves all the videos and he loves watching games you know I remember him with Yerson's a good example him saying he'd watch Yerson at 10 past two in the morning watching a game and seeing a young player that he thought was interesting. So yeah, a real passion for, for finding players and, and both very diligent as well. Is the relationships you're building up with other clubs a, a really important thing? I mean, obviously we've seen a couple of youngsters coming through from Manchester City and the idea of bringing them in in, in particular seems quite impressive. Yeah, I think, I think that you know people just assume that recruiting is always about you've got to spend £100 million and I think we've... We, I think we like to think of ourselves as a football club. We like to look at things a bit differently. Yeah, obviously my my um, experience of some of these younger players I knew from Man City from my time there were players that you know I knew that were available uh, and that could bring in. I thought it had high quality and high potential, and obviously a good relationship with Man City that you know they wanted. They're happy for players to come here because they know we'll continue to develop them. Yeah, how hard is that when it, when the window opens and the level of competition you've got with other Premier League clubs sort of steps up a bit? Yeah, I mean, I mean the, the Premier League now is the league where players want to be, and obviously, um, but obviously the, the clubs want to spend the money, and there's, there's lots of other competitors. But yeah, it's something that I, I certainly really enjoy, and I enjoy that period. Although it can, the last day can be a bit messy. You touched on it before about the duration of time you've been here and the progress has been made. But overall, how has the technical recruitment and the academy side of the club built during your time? I think I think this season is probably a good example. That, you know the. The under-18s have got to a Youth Cup semi-final. Uh, the 23s are, uh, you know, second in the second division with a with a very young team, and they've got the Premier League Cup semi-final tonight. So I think the foundations are very strong. It's something that obviously I'm very passionate about. And some of the clubs that I see really progress. Sometimes it is the development, and and it's sometimes young players breaking through and really raising the standards of the club. So that's something I believe in massively. So from a from a development and technical point of view, really happy, and we're still continue to to work hard to try and improve that. Again, and ultimately, you know, Luke Cundell and, and probably Chem breaking through a little bit this season uh, has been a prime example of that. And do Fosen see that in terms of the support they're willing to give you? Oh, massively. You know, from the day, first day that Fosen came in, you know, I was working the academy and they said that, you know, the academy was vital. It was going to be the, you know, big area we wanted to develop players. So, um, you know, and, and again, if we look at development players, we look at the performances of Morgan and, and, and Dion Sanderson and Ryan Giles, uh, and, and Matty Sarkic all probably performing an elite standard in, in the championship and three of those boys have been here since they were eight so you know it's been a lot of hard work over the years by people to really give these boys a chance and I'd like to think that they come back into the football club and, and progress with us as well. The reason supporters hold the first transfer window of the Premier League era in such high regard is because the signings came off and they really worked. Will that be possible to replicate down the line do you feel? Do you think you can get a window like that again? I think, I think at that point we needed to spend a lot of money to get to the to, to compete in the Premier League. I think we used that market really well in terms of quite a few of the players with loans with options. So I'd like to think that we're always looking at opportunities to, to make deals and to bring in players that are going to improve us. I think it has become more difficult because we're now, you know, we're a Premier League club that's now established. So again, as I said earlier in the interview, it's very difficult to always find players better than what you got. At that point, it probably was easier. But yeah, I, th 
I think that we're always looking to progress and if there's a player out there that can make us better and we've got the money to spend it and we think it's the right deal, we'll certainly try and do that. In that sense of Wolves hit the sort of glass ceiling and they can't progress or do you feel Wolves can find another way of, of getting through into the top, top six? Well, I think if you look at the football club, you know, I came here seven years ago and we were just promoted from League One. So if you say we can't progress, then I would probably say you're probably wrong. I think, you know, the club is progressing on a re regular basis. Last season was frustrating and obviously, um, you know, obviously Raul's injury and the season didn't go as well. No, no fans, which I think is massive for us as a football club as well. So, yeah, that was probably our first season we haven't. But again, this season we progressed from last year. Again, as I said at the start of the interview, I want to progress. I want us always, you know, I'm realistic. I don't expect us to go and win the spend the same money, amount of money as Man City or Liverpool, but I certainly wanted to try and progress. And I think certainly on the field we've shown we can compete. We've seen with the numbers though, at the top end of the Premier League, that you perhaps do have to spend significantly. I mean, are you suggesting there is a way around that? I think that ultimately, as I said earlier, to, to find players that are better than top Premier League players is difficult, but we're always looking and we're always doing something. And, and, and I'd like to think, it, you know, that if we really need to, then I can speak to the chairman and maybe can help in that way. But it is difficult and realistic. And how much of, of what you're doing, in, in a sense, is down to what you can reinvest from profits? Yeah, I think, that, like I said before, there's, you know, there's some, probably some players that will be moving out. And uh, I'm, I'll certainly be pushing and driving hard to get that money to spend. Uh, I certainly get the sense that that would be the feeling of what I'm allowed to do. So anything that does happen, then I want to spend the money, yeah, and certainly try and improve the squad and try and, try and make us to progress.